Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Dr. Garayas, BIO112, Anatomy and Physiology, and uh, we will be discussing today a quick video lecture. If I can get this thing up. Chapter 6 um, Integumentary System or Skin. And of course, the integumentary system, of course, the largest organ by weight is the skin, also known as your cutaneous membrane. You have, of course, the epi, meaning the prefix meaning outer. So your epidermis is the top layer, and the dermis is the more inner layer. Um, and what's uh, subcutaneous layer? Subcutaneous layer after that, also known as the hypodermis layer, and that has a lot of uh, adipose or uh, fat cells. Here is a nice uh, um, picture, uh, very good for lab, but you can always ask. The epidermis layer, as you can see here, um, not it's avascular, not a lot of arteries and veins, but the dermis has a lot of arteries and veins. Dermis also has um, you know, hair follicle, uh, erector pili muscle. It has nerves in it. The, the ones closer to the top are for touch or tactile sense, and that's called Meisner's corpuscles. And the ones deeper are called for deep touch, Bassinian corpuscles. Um, here you have a uh, Miracrin sweat gland. And remember the last lecture, uh, Miracrin, apocrine, and holocrine. So Miracrin is the type that will uh, secrete sweat. Adipose tissue here in the subcutaneous. And of course, lots of arteries and veins at that level. And underneath everything, that is your muscle layer, all the way underneath that. Epidermis, of course, as we recall, it has a basement basement layer, as you can see here. That's where all the young cells, and then as they grow older, they tend to form apoptosis and die off. And then you have the uh, stratum corneum or the top part of the epidermis, and that has all the stratified flat squamous cells up here. And here's more squamous cells, but these are these are like younger, and um, these are you know you know when um, I showed you in class when I scratch my skin, and you know um, that top uh, layer that's the one that gets removed. Um, Dendritic cells are also found in your skin. They have a phagocytic uh, function, so it's an immune function. Um, we already talked about Merkel cells. You have the, those little discs. You have light touch, which is um, your Meissner's, and then you have the deeper uh, Pacinian corpuscles, which is for deep touch. In your epidermis, you also have, well, it's on the bottom part of the epidermis, you also have melanocytes. Um, they secrete melanin, which is um, absorbs UV radiation and protects you uh, from sunlight. Um, and as a, a, as a side note, it provides skin color. So the more melanocytes, the more melanin you have, the more skin color you have, and the greater your ability to absorb UV radiation or UV light. Again, it is um, DNA source, so it depends on, um, you know, um, the locale of your DNA. If your DNA states that your family is from a region that's close to the equator, that's uh, sunny and very hot, and a lot of UV radiation, then of course you'll have more melanocytes, you'll have darker colored skin, and also that also affects you know the coarseness of your hair and also the color of your eyes. Albinism, nice to know, eh, it's a lack of melanin. And if you have a lack of melanin, you have you lack the ability for uh, UV radiation. Now, uh, there are environmental factors, of course, skin, sunlight, UV radiation, and X-rays. Uh, physiologic functions of factors also as well. Oxygenation, um, uh, vasodilatation, vasoconstriction of uh, your blood cells. Dermis, of course, is that middle layer. And you can see that the projections form like finger-like uh, ridges, and those are called your dermal papillae. 
that's like the, how the basement membrane comes around, loops around. And remember, I mentioned in class, it's it's a it's a actually better way of the top layers to secure itself or anchor itself to the lower layers. Of course, uh, dermis has a lot of blood supply, a lot of hair follicles, sweat glands, and sebaceous glands. Sweat glands in the form of uh, mirocrine, sebaceous glands are holocrine. And again, Pacinian and Meissner corpuscle. Pacinian, pressure, deep pressure. Meissner's, light touch. Um, papillary reticular layer, is of course, the deeper layer. The papillary layer is up top, closest to the epidermis. And you can see here, it forms these little ridges here, little fat fingers that are sticking out, and that's your um, that's, uh, papillary. Accessories are your hair, nails, and of course, the glands within the dermis. Nails, nice to know. We're going to skip through that. Hair, nice to know, not important to me. The sebaceous glands, you need to know that. The holocrine gland, it produces this oil-like substance, which is called sebum, right? And uh, excess sebum, of course, acne and acne vulgaris. Sebaceous glands are not needed or required on the palms and uh, soles of the skin. There are also different types of sweat glands. You also have sudoriferous glands. Um, different types of sweat glands, of course, the eccrine, also known as the American glands. We already discussed that. Apocrine, um, axillary, think A, axillary, and of course your groin areas, and the specialized sweat glands. Ceramin, C-E-R-U-M-E-N, which is the earwax, and of course, uh, mammary glands. They don't, of course, make sweat, but they make milk. Skin functions, obviously, there's a protective barrier, not only a physical barrier, but also a barrier against UV radiation, against water loss. Uh, sensation, of course, you can feel things. You have your misers and proscenium corpuscles. Excretion, we mentioned it in class, the, the, the miracrine and apocrine sweat glands, they also excrete any waste, because remember, anything that's extra in your skin is, um, you know, it has to be uh, removed. Vitamin D deals with calcium absorption. This is very good to know. And vitamin D is required by some UV radiation. So too much UV radiation, UV radiation, not good. Some UV radiation, very good. It makes vitamin D. Vitamin D has a lot to do with the thyroid hormone and calcium absorption. Regulation of body temperature, of course. Uh, sweating uh, and uh, shivering uh, keeps, uh, you know, um, your thermal regulation. Radiation, conduction, convection, evaporation, heat loss through the skin, nice to know. Mm, I think I, I went over it in class, but eh, it's not really good for me. When the body temperature rises, when the body temperature falls, this is important. Thermal receptors signal the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus is the part of the brain that deals with homeostasis. And thermal uh, thermal regulation is definitely homeostasis. So when it gets warm in the room, of course you're going to have vasodilatation of your dermis, and then of course uh, think more vasodilatation and think sweat glands get activated because you have to open up all uh, your pores and you also have to open up your blood vessels so that the blood flow can so that um, you know the heat can dissipate into, out of your skin. Now, when your body temperature falls, the thing that you really have to think about is what? Basal constriction of thermal blood vessels, because you want to try to, you know, keep all the blood there. So look at the basal constriction and vasodilatation. They're opposites regarding the temperature rises and the temperature falls. Nice uh, question. And of course, when the temperature uh, falls, muscles contract involuntarily. That's shivering because of what? The direct application of the motor or descending or efferent pathways that we talked about in other, in other lectures. Hyperthermia, hypothermia, nice to know. Hyperthermia, abnormally high body temperature. Hypothermia, abnormally low body temperature. We don't like body temperature to exceed 105, 106 degrees Fahrenheit due to the obvious reasons that we mentioned. But 
Inflammation, of course, because of the increased tissue fluid, um, increased heparin, increased histamine, we already know that from the mast cell. You'll have redness, swelling, warmth in the affected area, and pain. And of course, the area you won't be able to use very well. And that's your fifth cardinal sign of inflammation, which is functional acea. Reddening is uh, calo, uh, no, reddening is rubor, swelling is tumor, and a tumor is just a lump of a bump to us. The warmth is calor, and the pain is dolor. And of course, the fifth cardinal sign and symptom of inflammation is functional acea, where that particular area won't be functioning too well. So that's your breakdown of inflammation, or also known as itis, uh, popular suffix. Cuts, you don't need to know. We are not dealing with pathology. Burns, nice to know. I may or may not put it in there. Superficial, first degree burns only affects the epidermis. Partial thickness or second degree burns moved through the epidermis and into some of the dermis. A blister may form. It is painful. So is the uh, super, superficial first degree. This both has pain. But the full thickness, third degree burn, will destroy all the way down to the, uh, the end of the dermis and it will include neurologic structures. So your patient won't be feeling a thing. But we have grave dis concerns over two things regarding burn. Over um, there's no more protection in the skin in that particular area, so that area is ripe for is that the word? That word, right? Uh, or ripe? Or, I don't know how I'm using it. Well, just how's this? There's a lot of infection, so we have to deal with that. And of course, your skin can no longer have sweat glands. It can no longer uh, process water, so your patient's going to get dehydrated real fast. Rule of nines, eh, nice to know. Rule of nines for burn patients. They're not going to be at the so we don't care about that part. And last but not least, the lifestyle changes, which is, uh, um, you know, of course, the epidermis and dermis will become thinner, loss of fat, wriggling, uh, wrinkling, and sagging. And that also relates to less oil, less water, greater. Uh, um, um, greater risk for dehydration, greater risk for um, poor wound healing, and especially if the patient is diabetic or has any um, uh, vascular insufficiencies like, uh, um, like hyper or hypotension, and of course, uh, um, uh, diminished ability to produce vitamin D. Body temperature regula regulation becomes less effective. And remember the stories I told you, you know, about older patients. Um, it could be like, you know, 40 degrees in the room and they'll still say it's hot and vice versa. So that's it regarding um, skin. Um, study, 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 and I'll see you guys in class. Bye.